Hey, welcome back to the Real Estate Excellence Podcast with your host, Tracy Hayes. Best of the best I have. This young lady is the best. I follow her on Facebook and Instagram really daily. It almost seems hourly that she has a new video up or doing something. Well, when you listen to the show, you will realize... Um, yes, I apologize. I wrote such a long intro. I got loose. I should have made a bigger lettering. Uh, here, let me start that over. While you listen to this show, you'll need you'll need to realize what "broke as a joke" means, and uh, it's gonna be very interesting. This interview, uh, not long ago, she was living on her brother's floor. Um, I've I've chased her from day one that I started the Real Estate Excellence podcast. I've been bothering her to get her on, and I've got her in the house today. I'm uh, uh, just amazed by that she has over 22,000 almost 22 and a half thousand uh instagram followers i checked that last night uh she created a successful online course to help other agents on instagram she is consistently on the short list of the keller williams atlantic partners south side um success list in october alone 2.8 million by herself she recently started her own pie podcast highest and best uh, in the last seven years, she's been a little less than seven years. You've been in the business. She's a major influencer in the Northeast Florida, uh, real estate. She has a, uh, a following because she is willing to share her best practice, uh, in her, and she has a great respect by the other agents, uh, in her field. There is no one that I have seen that has the energy, not only for her clients as her numbers show it, but she is consistently utilizing social media to expand her brand. Let's welcome the, the best to the show, Stevie Hahn. Wow, thank you so much for that intro. That was great. <laughs> thank you. Sorry I botched you, but I, I spent last night, I was writing that, and I, you know, you, you start reading it, and then you realize, I tried to read it like three or four times to make sure I ironed that out. But no, that was great. I think I got it, I got it over. And, and you know, I've been bugging Stevie, because we had a mutual client not too long ago with the builder, <laughs> and I, I, got, I got to get you on, got to get you on, you know, and when I was originally... Um, you know, thinking about the podcast and my coach was like, Hey, list, you know, the top 100 people that you would want to be on there. And you, obviously you were one is mm -hmm. I think your, your social media impact. And uh, I actually, I'm not going to read what I wrote here because it's, it's kind of corny, but, um, of all the 37 people, you know, Melissa Ricks on not too long ago, we just got done talking mm -hmm. about her is great, but I really didn't know Melissa very well. I don't know you personally, but on, as you mentioned in some of your podcasts and some of your stuff, by your social media, I feel I know something about you. Yes. I know what your I know what your uh, your podcast studio looks like, yeah. and some of your house and your dog, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> amongst other things. So uh, you do make your you do put yourself out there, and that's what I'm hearing a lot on the podcast. I'm sure we'll talk about that today from from the greats around the country. Uh, and you are you are really owning it, and there's, I'm sure there's others, but you really, in, at least in Northeast Florida, I don't know of anyone that um, is quite at your level, and you just, you know, you really put out a production, you would think you had 10 people working for you. Uh, it's, it's amazing some of the things you do. So I just want, I wrote a quote down here that I saw you post this morning, and I just want to start us off with this. Yeah. Long before you face a problem, God has a plan. Yes. Yes. Where'd you pull that from? Um, I think I had saw someone else, but I just, I truly believe that, that there's, there's a plan for everything, even struggles that I've gone through. I always knew like there's something better out there for me. I just need to keep working towards that and fi figuring it out. I'm going to, because I had that quote, I'm going to jump a little bit into my uh, show. I'm going to, as I often do, <laughs> when, the, when the subject to stay on the, on the subject. It's your show. You get it's to do my, whatever that's, you want. Thank you. <laughs> I, I've listened to you in a couple podcasts telling about your story. And to me, it is super inspirational because as I told them in the last podcast, it wasn't, you know, 2001 where I literally, um, you know, wasn't, I wouldn't say I had to live on my brother's floor, but I wasn't that far from it. You know, uh, uh, basically broke. Um, you know, I always had to, I could always, you know, find something else to do and make money. I wasn't like distraught or anything, but basically broke. And, and the fact that you were there, you know, obviously you're you know, much younger than I am, but you were there not too long ago. And when you, I read that quote, and I, I thought, I'm, I'm thinking of Stevie, she said that, okay, the first night you slept on the floor, the second night you bought an air mattress, mm -hmm. and you're laying there on the air mattress. You, I think you said you rolled over and like you were facing the wall because you're in your brother's room, and you're facing the wall. What was going in through your mind? This, this sucks. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was really horrible, but I knew I wanted to get myself out of that. Mm -hmm. And I knew I had good work ethic, but I just was like, I got to figure out what it is that I'm passionate about. Yes. 
that that it's you know how many of us you know you, uh, you know you said you dabbled a little bit in college mm -hmm. uh you don't need a degree. You're making more money than the average graduate does uh, because you found that niche. Mm -hmm. Dig it a little bit there. I mean, you know, again, go off script a little bit because that's really the inspirational part is you searched for your niche. Did you, when you first thought uh, thought about, you know, you, know, you, were, you did a little insurance, you, mm -hmm. you did this uh, smoothie the yeah. thing or whatever you're doing, and you were finding yourself as a young person, and then all of a sudden you, you – did real estate kind of like there was some attraction to it that you thought maybe this might work for me? Yeah. So my mom had her real estate license, I think, for a year or two um, and not much had came of it. Mm -hmm. But I had seen her get her license. And um, I mean, I really at the end of the day saw how hard it was. But she was the one who's like, get your real estate license. And I knew in order to figure out what it is that I'm passionate about, I need to try new things, right? So I was like, all right, let's get this. And um, something that I find interesting from agents that I've met over the years is that they get into the business thinking like they're going to do this full time or they want to transition into this full time. And um, I, I never thought felt that way because I knew how hard it was. And I guess where I was mentally at that time, I right. just didn't have a lot of right. self-confidence. Your, your mom wasn't doing it full time. She kind of just dabbled right. in it. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Um, so that was basically what kind of sparked the idea was her just saying, get your real estate license. Right. And, uh, and, and, and each day you were there, the path led you, as we go back to the quote, he has a plan. Yes. And I, I got my real estate license and I went with a particular brokerage with, which I always recommend interviewing multiple brokerages because they all are so different. Um, and I only interviewed one and just went with them. I felt like the broker was going to help me. Um, and our goals just weren't aligned and mm. it wasn't a lot of like-minded people. I was there for six months and, and I, really was feeling at that time. I was like, real estate, it's not for me. And I was like, you know, I just, I didn't want to be it was discouraging. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And, um, really I ended up putting my license somewhere else. I started going to trainings. I started meeting new friends and, um, really learning a lot about the business and, and getting myself out there. And that's where the passion came in. Give me, give me an example at that first one, like something where you guys didn't connect. What, yeah. what was something, one of those? Yeah. So, um, and a lot of, I was going to the trainings, like I need to learn. Right. right. So I was going to the trainings and I would leave the trainings like what? And I didn't learn anything. And, and I felt like the other people that were there were just a lot different from me. And I was just like, man, like, mm -hmm. this isn't what I thought, you know, and I sat down with the broker. I was like, I'm feeling a little discouraged. And he drew this funnel. And he was like, you got to get these people in the funnel, a lot of people in the funnel. <laughs> and I was, it just wasn't, I wasn't grasping. It. I was like, what? Right. Okay. Like, need well, a you funnel? were, you're what? 20. Yeah. I was 25. Yeah. Yeah. And you didn't have a tremendous amount of like, not like you do today or, or, or your parents yeah. did his life experience. So yeah. you didn't know where to attach some yeah. of that stuff. Yeah. And I, I um, didn't really have a whole lot of friends. So I was mm. like, how do I find new people? So essentially I got on Instagram, which was to me, I feel like just starting at that point. And I don't think videos were a thing just yet, right. but, um, I didn't, I didn't even start with videos. I was just posting photos because I was not confident to be on video right. at all. Um, and really what was uh, such a game changer for me was uh, a gentleman, Greg McDaniel. He's a real estate agent out in Walnut Creek, California. And he really, I became really good friends with him and he had embedded in my brain for a year. Like your business is going to explode once you get on uh, video. He knew my personality. He knew I was out there uh, trying to meet people and educate myself. And uh, after hearing that over and over, I was like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to try. And man, I sucked at first. <laughs> um, it, it, you, it goes, it, I think it goes to the cornerstone of you. We were talking about the books, um, you know, personal development books and reading these ins inspirational stories. And one of the cornerstones is surrounding yourself by mm -hmm. the five people, mm -hmm. which I will tell you, if you're in real estate, surround yourself with this lady, whether it's physically or over her social media, yes. because you're giving out a tremendous amount of, of really great information. You move from one brokerage to the next, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden things started to click. Mm -hmm. Were there, because I know I've seen pictures of you through with some other very successful women in the area. Mm -hmm. Is that the kind of people you were running into that started, things started to click? Yeah. You started. 
Yeah, I think um, even befriending people who were new, you know, who were at the same level at me, I still felt was beneficial because we could do things together. It helped build my confidence to do open houses with other people. I was dabbling with door knocking and cold calling and just having the the group of people where we were doing it together. But then also I did make the initiative to reach out to other people who were more successful. It was like, can I have lunch with you? I just want to learn. Right. That, that was the goal was like, I wasn't even thinking about money. I was like, I know I need to learn. Because I've, I've, you know, I'm, I'm listening to you respond to the questions. I've listened to you on other interviews, so I'm triggering the thoughts. And when you uh, say that it's not about the money, um, which is a common theme in the successful uh, thing, and I think you've mentioned um, uh, service to others. As I was listening to the other podcast, you've made that that statement um, to many. When you, we do a lot of things. I do things. You do things that we don't actually equate dollars to, but we know there's a there's a you you create a momentum like your social media. No one's like you right. You're not doing a video, posting it on YouTube, and waiting for a check to come in right. the mail. Correct. But you're hoping that over time you've now posted this thing that's out there eternally. Yeah. And people are going to see that. And I think one of the terms you used uh, when I was uh, listening to one of the podcasts today. You were posting on Instagram so much that people were like, oh, you're killing it. And you're like, you haven't even sold a house yet. Yes, (laughs) yes. I was just, um, and honestly, it's a lot of what I post now. Um, Mm. Going, getting certifications, training, uh, touring new construction, resale, all the things that I'm doing now. Mm. And those were all the things that I was sharing in the beginning. Um, Because, you know, as a real estate agent, we do a lot of things for free. And Mm. so I was just doing all those things that I needed to be doing. And I started running into friends and people that I was meeting and that we would connect on Instagram and be like, wow, it looks like you're doing so great and I'm like I haven't had a closing yet but because I I never was like I'm at a closing you know (laughs) nothing to do with that so it's it's interesting you know that perception that you can give someone with with social media well you because you speak with great confidence uh you know when I watch your videos I I haven't I I want to go you mentioned you were comparing your older videos to what you do today and that would be I I need to dig into your file and actually look at the original videos versus uh um today I actually there was a, you posted a photo. This was a while back. It was like you're one of your first customers. Oh, and yes. I saw you then and I see you now. And yeah. you would think there was like 20 years I, between. <laughs> trust, I think this job has really aged me a lot because I look back and I'm like, and no one can believe it. They're right. like, you look like a completely, I was so different on the outside. And I feel like on the, on the inside too. That looks like, I, you know, when I think about what we were talking about earlier, Like you just graduated from Nice in 2006. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So let's let's so let's retract a little bit because we got off tangent on some good stuff there. But let's tell let's get everyone a little bit about Stevie. You did you grow up here in Jacksonville? Um, Where where were you born? I came here. I was born in Melbourne, Mm -hmm. um, and I came here with my parents um, in like eighth grade and Mm -hmm. in Ponte Vedra. Um, And then I left for a little bit to go to Gainesville to go to school, but I I came back because I just love it here so Mm -hmm. much. Yeah. Um, But you know, after leaving high school, like I didn't really keep in touch with a lot of people. I didn't feel like I had a good close knit of, of people. So it really was like starting from the ground up. I felt like well, Florida's so, so unique there from the standpoint, cause we are a very transient, uh, you know, people moving in and out for jobs. Obviously we got military coming in and out mm-hmm. and so forth. It's, it's not like, you know, I, I grew up in the Northeast and obviously I still talk on, you know, Facebook, you know, binds you with, you know, thir- I wouldn't say a 30, had 30, no, college is going to be 30 next year. So it'll be 34 years next year, uh, high school reunion. And, you know, I still bind with them because we all grew up. We, we were in elementary mm-hmm. school and, you know, really, you don't really, That's not cool. too many uh, in Florida that mm-hmm. really could say right. that because it's transient. So right. it is a, there is a, there is a challenge there, but then there's opportunity, right? Yeah. Cause there's, everyone's open for, mm-hmm. for open for suggestion to make, they want to make friends. Mm-hmm. Right. And I'm sure you've uh, experienced obviously in the communities around here, how, uh, one person moves in and then they're telling all their friends they need mm-hmm. to move into the same community, mm-hmm. you know, to, to keep that bond, uh, from other areas. So you, you got out of high school, you were, um, I love your story about planet smoothie. You're working at planet smoothie and, and the uh, college kids didn't want to, 
they're probably calling in sick. They gotta go. Oh, to, yeah, go yeah, go yeah. to the party yeah, or whatever. And you were running. You trying to run the show. Yeah, I was. I had to be there so early till so late, and then I was taking classes. It was it was tough. What, what do you think? you I mean, because you have a tremendous amount of work ethic, um, let alone energy. I mean, that's an underlying yeah. thing there. Where, where do you think? Where, where did that come from? I mean, your, your parents were they self employed or what, what kind of? Where did you think you kind of? My dad, he yeah. has always been an entrepreneur. He's always owned restaurants and he is even the one in the kitchen cooking open to close. Uh, not so much now. He still cooks for mm -hmm. one of his buddies restaurants, right. um, you know, kind of just extra cash, I guess. Right. But he's always owned restaurants, worked 24 seven. And I'm like, I always think of that, like, I'm not even over a hot stove, right? Like yeah. I'm in the AC, like that's, <laughs> that's nothing. And so yeah, I get. I really know that I have gotten my work ethic from do, him. Do you think his passion in the restaurant business is, oh, is your passion so, in the real estate? So passionate about yeah. his job. He yeah. just loves being in there. Yeah, that, loves being in there. Loves cooking. Loves providing a really good experience mm -hmm. for people. And staying till the job's done. Yeah. Yeah. Not not cutting out early. Um, because we've gone off track a little bit, so get, bear with me here. Looking back on those experiences that you had prior to becoming an agent. And uh, you, I go back to you laying on this air mattress and your brothers. If you if you were to go back, had a time machine to go back to that mm -hmm. moment, if you were laying there just looking at the ceiling, which I imagine you were doing a good bit of time because you said you had a problem sleeping, <laughs> uh, you're looking at the ceiling. But knowing what you know now, I mean, what how would what, what would you? I feel as though I wouldn't do anything different as much as things weren't ideal. Right. I mean, that has really become who I am. And I feel like as it pushed me to work even harder. Mm. So do you look back? I, I look back at some of the times when, when I literally like it, it was broke as yeah. a joke, like you said, you're the phrase you use um, and laugh. Oh yeah. I laugh. And you know, the fact that you did not let it yeah. knock you down. It did not, you know, send you astray. You kept focused and, and in a very short period of time. Mm. Uh, and I, and I was, when I was listening to one of the interviews too, uh, uh, I think Jesse Lane was asking you, um, you know, you talked about buying a house and you said, no, I stayed because you took over your brother's apartment. Oh, yeah. I heard that correctly. Yes. And you yes. stayed in there yeah. for a while. You yeah. could have gone out and gotten a fancier apartment right. or condo yeah. I was, or whatever. I was you, saving my money. Yeah. And, and I, I am still very frugal to this day. My friends make fun of me, <laughs> <laughs> but, and I think it, it comes from that time where it's just like, I never want to go back to that. And so I always want to, cause I was struggling then I was in debt. I was, uh, you know, hardly getting by. And I mean, obviously I couldn't even get my own place. I couldn't even afford to be a roommate for right. someone at that point. So to me, I always just think about that. I never want to get back to that point and always want to make sure I set myself up financially. Mm. It's so interesting. We were talking about Melissa Ricks before the show. Yes. And I had her on a couple episodes ago. So anyone want to go back and listen to that, but she talks about the, the attitude that her and her husband had because they literally had nothing mm -hmm. and she's extremely successful today. And but they still go about every day as if someone could come take mm -hmm. that tonight mm -hmm. from them. I, lo I love that. Yeah. I mean, she's a fool. And, and for anyone in sales, whether it's a loan officer, whether, I don't know, maybe you're a great car salesman yeah. or anything. I mean, just because you had a great month right. doesn't mean right. you got to go out and, and, and show your friends. Right. Be humble. Oh, 100%. Be humble. Because you're only as good as your last one. Now you put some money in the bank and then you want to you treat yourself, which, I, you know, we only live once, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. go on a great vacation or something like that. Um, or obviously, you know, you're, you're at a point in your life where, you know, you buy a nice house. Mm -hmm. It's an, it's now an investment because you, you were talking about a buying investment property, but that is an investment mm -hmm. you're making yourself. You got your podcast studio in there. It sounds like you spend a lot of time as office time from home. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. I, I used to always have to have an office in with the brokerage. Mm -hmm. um, well, I guess since COVID happened, it was like, oh, I have no choice. I have to work from home now. Right. And then once I did, I was like, this is great. Yeah. I love this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I worked from home for eight and a half years. Um, uh, well, you, you'll you'll have a family and kids, and then you'll yeah yeah like, <laughs> you I, might, I need to get I, think out. I need to go to the office. Or <laughs> but I think actually that was so beneficial for yeah. me in the beginning. Getting started was I I even though I didn't even have an office at first, I just used utilized one of the desks, and I would go there every single day, Monday mm -hmm. through Friday. Like everyone at the beach office always knew when they came in there, I was going to be there unless I left for an appointment. If I left for an appointment or for lunch, I would be right back. Right. And I just stayed in the office. It was it was so beneficial 
special to be around other realtors to learn from them because you know everyone's always talking about their transactions but then you always have someone there to ask ask for help and it was really motivating for me to to be in that atmosphere. You mentioned that in one of the interviews and I, and I you mentioned the phone ringing and you would always be there because oh, yeah. obviously a lot of people yes. didn't come in the office and you answered the phone and you yep. got some deals out yeah. of it because you were, you there. were scraping from the bottom of the barrel yeah. and you know you didn't have couldn't buy your own leads or probably right. you know, or what leads you could get but you stayed in there to answer the phone to get your business going yeah and I imagine some of those customers you still have today you've probably yes. been repeat clients yeah and that's the same story of two others very successful and I'll mention them because they've been on the pod oh, been cool. on the pod CC and yeah. Christina Welch okay. they were they got their careers really started just as we were going in the 2008 mm-hmm. crash and what they, they both, uh, Christina, especially she was at Watson at the time, she stayed, went in that office and she took people coming in yeah. and answered the phones and worked her tail off. Right. And then wh- where is she at today with her great team that she has? Crushing yeah. it. Yeah. Um, j- j- just, uh, amazing stories. Um, uh, this question here, cause you mentioned Instagram earlier mm-hmm. and that you started using, so you were at the original brokerage, then you, you got into the, the second brokerage. Was that the one with the rentals? You were doing rentals too? Yeah. Yeah, you started to get there. Mm-hmm. When did you feel you really started to get it? Mm, and what was good... what was clicking? What was the groove that you, you got in? Awesome. One, two. Oh, geez, I got three or four. Yeah, you know? yeah. When do you feel you... It really didn't get consistent for me until after a year, and then I really just went all in. I, I always talk about... Instagram. Um, but I really use Instagram as like my portfolio, um, a way to leverage myself. So I'm all about meeting people one-on-one and in person. And, and I was really into hosting events so that whenever I would meet somebody new, I would use my Instagram as like my portfolio so that they could, this is such a great way for people to see, um, how you're different from other realtors. Cause I actually, when I tell people, I'm like, Oh, I'm a realtor. It's just like, oh, there's so many realtors. It's really saturated, right? Mm-hmm, so you mm-hmm. have to do a lot of things to to stand out in this business. So I always connect with people on Instagram because I want them to see, like, I am in this. I am educated. I actually have sales. Uh, showcase my personality to help build that trust with them. So um, that's just something that I'm, I'm always wanting to do is, like, get one-on-one with people. Like, of course, Instagram, but... Well, you you're, you mentioned in the in the interviews as I keep referring back to because obviously that was a big part of your bio. Just listening to you tell your story, and you were talking about you know meeting with lenders, meeting with home inspectors, right, yeah. and so forth. And as a, a young realtor, you had that time mm-hmm. to do that. You didn't go, oh, I'm going to sit in here and wait till someone tells me or wait for that phone to ring, right? Because um, there's plenty of times to do that. You mm-hmm. obviously can't, you know to fill your day all day long, but you took advantage of, of meeting people and learning mm-hmm. more about the industry. Yeah. There's, there's so much to learn there, that state test doesn't teach you anything. So right. even, um, meeting with these, uh, potential vendors was not only education wise, but to help build my database, mm-hmm. they might know of someone looking to buy or sell. And then when I connected with them on social media, it really blew them away for them to see how much I was working in the field and, and how serious I was. And you get the you get the practice interacting. Oh yeah, I think a lot of you know obviously communication day is done over so a lot of so old social media. Right. But the obviously the number one way to impact someone is face to face. Yeah. You were doing a lot of face to face. So even though that was a lender or a home inspector or whatever, you were you know learning about what they do mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. forth. But you were practicing your interaction, which is so, huge. Yeah. So when you go and meet that client. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a little easier. And even just meeting people now, it's Mm -hmm. like sometimes you meet up with somebody and you have to be the one making the conversation, asking the questions, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's just so kind of off track, but interesting to meet up with people where you leave the conversation and you're like, wow, like they didn't say anything, right? And you were the one pulling it out of them. Like, I I just hate that. I always recommend people to read How to Win Friends Friends and and Influence People (laughs) because also too, like I I needed that book too when I first started. I didn't know how to be good at that. So I just felt like that book was was such a game changer. And I I don't blame people for not being good with having conversations. They're just not educated on how I feel like. Right, right. And it's it's practice. And I I think a lot of that comes from your how you're brought up 
Mm -hmm. You know, if you were brought up in a family where mom and dad, you didn't speak Mm -hmm. unless spoken to type Mm -hmm. of thing, it might be a little more difficult. Um, I know uh, personally, I'm I'm a little shyer. So my my wife wants to go over uh, to the neighbors, you know, other women in the neighborhood because she's over oh, the yeah. mom's group, right? Yeah. And I walk in and I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, okay, honey, we're here for yeah. their party. You know, my when my son was younger and I don't know anyone. Yeah. It's a it's it's difficult and to be able to break that because that's our that's our job. Mm-hmm. Now I can invite you out for coffee and it's just you and me. It's that's right. easy because yes. we have a scheduled meeting. But be able to walk into a room you know, uh, go to an uh, event or social and just walk up mm-hmm. to somebody and start a conversation. Yeah. And how to win friends and influence people. I think you'll agree that is a, a cornerstone personal yes. development book. And it's all about, you know, getting that person to talk about mm-hmm. themselves. Mm-hmm. So you learn more about them mm-hmm. and then obviously show appreciation and that you're listening and focused on mm-hmm. them. Yeah. Uh, and it means a lot because it goes back to the other thing, I, I, I hit you the other day. You said it on uh, one of your things. I said, I'm going to use that in the interview, was uh, relationships. Yeah. You were talking about relationships. In the, I forget the actual line, yeah, but I too. remember <laughs> the bottom. The one line there was you were you just gestured about, it's all about building yeah. the relationships. Yeah. And the money will come mm-hmm. because of the contacts that you have. Yeah, I guess I'm always stressing because I do, I do these uh, speaking events and trainings and I did the course on Instagram and it, just so many agents think that they can just show up and, you know, yes, and, and do the reels and the Instagram stories and do the posts and like that's just going to bring everyone in, which it does happen. I do get buyers and sellers who reach out to me and a lot of realtor referrals is huge. But um, I feel like in order to make the long lasting impact with people locally is to meet up with them in in person and mm-hmm. build like an actual relationship with them to yes. build that trust. Yes. So that that's always just something I, I'm really trying to stress recently is like, we still have to meet up with them in person. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've come to that digital age where I think, yeah, people want to lay back get, on yeah. that. But you mentioned something very, I think was so vital uh, in, 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 in summing that in that what you're talking about. When you go out on a listing appointment, mm-hmm. because you have all this support that you've created over the years, the Instagram, mm-hmm. the Facebook, uh, constantly, people already know who they are. They aren't calling anyone else. Right. You've, so you've That's snuffed the out the competition yeah, with, the, with your work. The beauty behind it. And then the same with, uh, you know, I'm getting realtor referrals on there. And, you know, people are reaching out to me like, oh, when they think of Jacksonville, they're like, oh, I need to call CD to set them up with my client. Yeah. Because so that, you've branched out a little bit around the country and obviously right. going to Keller Williams events, they know you. And they can they can give them your name mm-hmm. and those people can Google your name and yeah. you're all, all there and you got all your social media in line. Yeah, there's a lot, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we, I mean, you're on there every day, and I, that's the one thing I just just blows my mind <laughs> with with you. Um, I meet a, a lot of uh, young people um, in agents. I was I was interviewing, um, you know, had coffee with a very new agent, um, and I was like, Stevie Hahn, watch what she's doing, see what she's doing, and and follow her. But you do it so the consistency because mm-hmm. that's all and everyone we're listening to reading consistency consistency yeah. i mean you're on there every moment you ride in your car what but just totally bl- blows my mind is every time you're on you have so much energy i could just feel the energy yeah. coming from you yeah and i think the people following you yeah are receiving that yeah yeah it's crazy i'm always so excited when i wake up and i always feel so beyond grateful to be able to do this it's mm-hmm. just such a blessing yeah. i love it so i feel like that's that gives me a lot of energy throughout the day and i'm just i'm doing something that i love and i enjoy and it, it always has me so excited so yeah uh well because you can, you could go back. I hope you, do you still have that at Mayor Mattress? You should still have that area. Oh, no. <laughs> no. That would be a great. No, but uh, my family and I kind of make jokes about it. I'm like, remember that one time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, many of us have been there and, and yeah. to, you know, to, again, to look back and be able to laugh about it. Um, but we also are humble enough to realize there are people out there that are at that point. Yeah. And, and that's one of the, I think one of the great things about you is, you know, you make yourself, so open you had your instagram uh you know course that you know you 
you're very involved. You have your mastermind, I think, on Wednesdays, right? Um, not, yeah, we haven't that? we haven't been doing that. We were doing that for, for two years, but mm-hmm. now we've um, me and someone else have transitioned into doing the podcast. Podcast, yeah. okay. So now is that actually yeah, you mentioned last week? It hasn't quite. It has launched not yet. gone. When's your first episode get out? There? I, I believe next Wednesday. You'll have your first on yep. a- Apple or Spotify yep. going out to all that. I guess everywhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so. Uh, the name of it again was uh, highest, and, highest best. and best, highest and best. You definitely have to search that hopefully next week. And I'm sure if you're following Stevie on any of your social media, she will let uh, you know yeah. it's out there for you to go get and, set, yeah. and have the link on your stuff. Cause it, it, it just uh, amazes me. Yeah. There's your, your consistent, you, you are a model from the standpoint of all the things that all the great players out there, are telling everyone to mm-hmm, do mm-hmm. and uh, have you had a video go viral on you i don't know i don't think so i always no. i talk about this video from the, i was listening to um uh a podcaster he's an exp agent out in utah mm-hmm. and salt lake city and he talked he was interviewing a guy from montana who had one of his videos go viral talking about moving to montana because a oh, bunch cool. of california yeah and it just went i mean he had a couple million views when i when i looked on it it was just amazing and uh then, then that led into a book some guy from oh, philadelphia wow. called him wow. and um put some of his blogs together and, mm-hmm. and stuff and then now so he's got a book so he he is now exposed himself out there in the social media mm-hmm. world with a book and on podcast he's mr that's montana great. yeah oh that's great yeah, i that, love that uh, i'll have awesome. to look him up yes um yeah, remind me. I'll, I'll look on my thing because I, I think I've got him um, his uh, podcast. I can't think of it off. The, I forget names, so I, but I have it saved. <laughs> that's that's what the great features what happens when you get older. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you feel is the most important thing you have done to have put you on such an upward trajectory? If there was just, I mean, you've done many things, mm-hmm. but what do you think is is one path is you know probably to give the the most credit to? I think what you had said, consistency, like I'm, I've, it's now, it was six years I've been in the business and I've always shown up. I've always done the events. I've always done the pop buys. I've sent gifts, always send the Christmas card. Mm -hmm. I am doing all the things that we are supposed to be doing in order to be successful in this business. Basics. Yeah. Um, building, building relationships, you know, I'm, I'm continuously building that friendships with my, with my friends. And it's, it's so great too, with social media, just, I've met so many new people and so many new friends from it. How important, um, because you mentioned that your friends and I see a lot of the pictures there, a lot of times other real estate agents. Yes. Yes. A lot of people see them as competition. Right. Why do you feel it's beneficial, um, that you've made yeah. this circle of, of great Many of them are female realtors that I see you on the picture with. Yeah. So. Well, a lot of them are agents all around the country, but the mm. people who are in our marketplace, I, we all run our business so differently. And so just befriending them, I feel like I always learn something because mm. they, they do something different. And then also when it comes to uh, working together, especially now with all these multiple offers, when I put in an offer for my client, even if it's not the highest, but this agent knows who I am and maybe we've never met, but they've seen my social media and they know that I'm going to work hard and get us through the smooth transaction that I'll, I'll be chosen you know so it's it's really been beneficial from several different angles so one of the cornerstones we mentioned it earlier surrounding yourself by the five people i think you i think you do that and there uh, you know and there may be other different circles that you mm-hmm. are but obviously what we're talking about is you know you're surrounding yourself with other successful agents yeah it's really important and and, and that you're you're you know whether you're sitting down mm-hmm. having a glass of wine or whatever mm-hmm. you're talking shop you're you're learning something from them grabbing from them obviously building a relationship but they're successful too and would you agree by surrounding it be, with successful people mm-hmm. that circle that every personal development book tells you to yeah. do yeah pushes you a little bit yeah oh abs- each day. oh absolutely I um and even if you're a newer agent and let's say you just don't feel like that confidence to reach out to somebody who's who's more successful I, I still say just do it you know uh mm-hmm. yesterday I had a conversation I don't know if you've heard of her Tiffany Pantosi she listed Shaq's house she's in Orlando she mm-hmm. has a huge team oh, um, I saw the I saw the video of you at oh, Shaq's, Shaq's house yeah. yeah yeah she um she she is so fabulous and really successful in this business and um you know I I called her yesterday just to have a conversation about something in real estate world. And I uh, had learned a couple of things after speaking with her and I've kind of always felt like, okay, she's way up here, you know, like, uh, 
but I is kind of nervous to reach out to her type right, thing. But right. it's like she's a human too. We're all, yeah. we're all we all put our pants on the same way, right? <laughs> they say some people that are up there are actually somewhat lonely that we're right. reaching out to yeah. them actually yeah you know you never know because we hear stories all the time oh hey i you know i reached out to xyz right. he's uh you know the greatest in this and he mm-hmm. actually yeah took me in and yes. mentored me and, and yes. you hear these stories but you have to ask right. you yeah. know uh, you have to you know instant message them every yeah every, I, I, I reach every out few to people weeks to get them to come on a podcast or yeah like that. oh yeah <laughs> Hey, but I, I came through. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm sure you heard of uh, Ricky Carruth, right? Ricky Carruth, the name sounds familiar. Wow. I, um, he is huge on, on social media and helping mm-hmm. realtors. But okay. um, I was nervous about reaching out to him to have our, him on our weekly call. And um, I was like, hey, would you want to be on here? You know, I, I know you never heard of me, blah, 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 all this stuff. And he came on. Yeah. So I was like, yeah. oh my gosh, this is great, you know? Well, what I found out, you know, I went to, I got my little tag here where I went to the podcast movement convention in oh, Nashville cool. uh, back in August. And there, you know, th- when you get in that little podcast club, mm-hmm. if you want to call it, there there are people who are willing to, you know, come on. Some of them, some of them are up there at a level that, you know, uh, because of their audience, uh, mm-hmm. you can promote your show, obviously, by you know, or if you can get a, be a guest on their show, which is would be totally awesome. And mm-hmm. some of the, you know, the Gary V's that kind of, oh, like, gosh. yeah, to be a guest on would just totally like blow your show up. Yeah. But to have them come on, come on your show, a lot of, you know, are open, you know, Hey, you know, can you get me 30 minutes on a, on a zoom call yeah. and, and do that podcast? A lot of them are, are willing to do that. Mm-hmm. They understand the energy like you meeting mm-hmm. the other agents, the energy you create amongst yourselves, kind of a little pressure on each other. Cause mm-hmm. you want to step up and yeah. be part of, you know, be, with them a yeah. little bit, right? Yeah, it motivates me a lot. Mm-hmm. I always remember uh, I graduated from the Citadel, the Citadel, the Military College of South Carolina. My mouth is dry. Let me wet it down. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the reasons why I went to uh, the Keller Williams office off of Southside was right. because a lot of the big there heavy is. hitters are yes. out of that office, and I wanted to surround myself with those people. So The story I was about to say was I, I am not a runner, okay? But there was these guys that could run like the wind. And so, but I had to prepare for the PT, the physical fitness test. So I would actually tell them to go out there and like tell them I'm going to stay up with them. And just, I don't care if I was a quarter mile behind them. Yeah. I was still, yeah. they kept you going. Yeah. And it, it, I got by the PT test. Same thing. You're joining Keller Williams Southside mm-hmm. to surround yourself by, and there are some big names mm-hmm. uh, that have been there and left. And, mm-hmm. there's, and there's a lot of big names that are still planting their sign there mm-hmm. and circling yourself with successful people. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Um, and to reach out, are you willing to reach out? New agent hits you up. Yeah. Do you have lunch with them? You, what, yeah. What people, do you, how, people, how do you, I'm sure you've had it happen. So how do you handle that? Um, a lot of times if they're not local, we just get on a quick zoom call. Um, and then sometimes it's a cup of coffee. Right. Yeah. And I mean, I, I enjoy it. I feel like I, I love talking about it and I love helping and, um, I'm, I'm here to help. So do you, do you feel you know, when you have that conversation with that new agent, um, you know, where you're at and, you know, there's, there's things that we do that we don't necessarily like we're writing down, like here's the ABC right. steps, here's the schematic of what you need to do. And they they often want that ABC mm-hmm. step yeah, because it just, they just want to know I first, know. but really it's a combination of a lot of things going on. I mean, not a lot, but just a few yeah. things to create that momentum of consistency. Yeah. So what, what do you, what do you, interact with them in a, in a conversation like that what do you yeah because it's way more than a cup of coffee talk right yeah, yeah. so a lot of times what I end up finding out is that it's a confidence issue so ultimately we end up discussing that like what what is it that you're really struggling with why can't you show up on video why aren't you doing these open houses those type things um, and then I also I decided to do that course because I was like okay this is a great way to help everybody and provide them with so much content um and so I created all these videos and pdfs and now I've built this uh facebook community you have relentless energy do you sleep yeah <laughs> <laughs> you'd be so surprised I have such great balance in my life it's it seems like it I really do seems, yes. so even though I have you know I'm doing all these different things um I'm really proud that I have some really good balance right but that that took work. Oh you've, gosh! You know, yeah, you've read, took- you've listened to podcasts, whatever. I mean, what do you prefer? Do you like rather listen to a podcast or a, uh, audio book? Or you actually like? I like 
the hardcover. Yeah. Most of them, yeah. Sometimes, Although I've become a podcast junkie, the hardcover. I know. I, I do love podcasts, and I have some of my favorites, and I know when they release their new episode that week, and I'm always tuning in. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also like audiobooks for when I'm in the car. But I do have a lot of books that I like. Um, do you have both of Ryan's books? Have you read yes, both of them? Yeah, I love I love his books. All right. I read them both in like one day. And then yeah, the 10X yeah. Rule is, is one of my favorites, yeah, too. Yeah. Especially on audio, because listening to Grant's voice, I feel like it gets you so amped. <laughs> so like that's the thing is like it just kind of depends i was i had gotten um daring greatly by Brene brown on audible mm-hmm. and i started listening to it and i was like no this is a book that i need like the hard copy right. um so it just kind of depends on the book right i, I like the accomplishment you know because we you, there's a there's a, oh. a lot of things that you get like we talk about we we're just talking about that new age and there's a lot of things that you want to you know get going in that circle yeah. to get that momentum going it's the same thing with personal development you got amp. You get amped by uh, his uh, mm-hmm. Cardone's uh, mm-hmm. energy that he has, mm-hmm. and gets your energy going. Gets you smiling. Hundred percent. When I read a book and complete a, a book, I feel good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There might have been some tips in there, and and you can be intimidated by Grant Cardone. Oh, ten X. I can't do what he does. But yeah. you know what? If you actually think about it, and I I use the phrase around the office, let's ten X this. Yeah. Is let's go all in. Let's, you know, give it the energy. Yeah. Are there people? Is there Grant Cardone obviously has mastered it, but if, if we could have a slice of the pie, yeah. of little his golden wealth, nugget. I mean, yeah. 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 I mean, move your, move your, uh, you know, you made enough, you, if you sold an extra five houses this year mm-hmm. because that motivated you and maybe you took one of but you 10 X, whatever you were doing, mm-hmm. Grant may mm-hmm. not do what you're doing, but you're, you're in your mind going 10 X. Yeah. It. Yeah. What I need to be focusing on. Yeah. yeah. And you just push that out there and you got five more sales. How does that change your lifestyle? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I really didn't get into reading books like this until I had this life insurance company and everybody was all about personal development and mm-hmm. reading. And once I dived in, I, I couldn't stop. I was like, this is so beneficial and truly life changing in a lot of ways. So well, it's kind of like um, it's kind of like working out. You know, sometimes yeah. it's hard to get oh, get the book open. Yeah. But when you get the book open, you're in every page you turn and the energy you're getting because you're reading the person has Ryan has energy. To, oh yeah. Or don't has energy. You're getting that from you feel good when you go. You, oh, I gotta get up and go work out. But you know, you get it done. And yeah. You're like oh, I feel so, so much, much better, better now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hundred percent. Yeah. It, it, and and that what that does to you when you then sit down and do a podcast or do your video, Mm -hmm. you've got this positive vibes just flowing from Mm -hmm. you. Do you feel the same? Yeah. 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 I hope, I hope that gets resonated with other people. And I think that's why I've attracted a lot of, a lot of agents, Mm but it's, you know, being positive, showing up, being motivated. I've totally 86 all news. And I, I I totally, uh, I'm listening to podcasts on the way Mm-hmm. There, anywhere I go, I'm yeah. turning my podcast. Obviously, I listen to mine afterwards to make sure <laughs> yeah. I get the click that someone listened to it. Yeah, but, <laughs> get that view. <laughs> yeah, get that view. Um, but it's filling you with positive energy. And sometimes you got to hear the same thing mm-hmm. over and over again. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I'm 51. You're much younger. You're obviously, you're on a trajectory I'd love to have been on when I was your age. But if you're 25 years old starting today, mm-hmm. Stevie's already done it. Mm-hmm. You've done it from the from the air mattress sleeping on the floor, yeah. let alone you know a, a bedroom in your parents' house still. Okay, so you're already a level yeah. up there. And to pick your brain, get onto your social media. You got your podcast now. It's going to be coming out and spilling information. Mm-hmm. Your Instagram is there. It's duplicatable. Yeah. Oh, hundred um, percent. And you don't even have to be as good as you are at it. You really don't. I mean, you're really good at it. I think, I think you're I really good. I th- is she really good at it, the audience? Uh, yeah, she's, I mean, you are really good at it. Uh, I, I mean, think we have some questions from the audience. Oh, yeah, oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah, sure, good. So, uh, That's fun. Calvin asks, uh, did you use a professional Instagram or just your personal one to start? Oh, okay. So I really like the creator account that you can utilize on Instagram because you still get um, all the analytics with it and you can run ads. So I don't, I don't have it set up as personal. So when you say run ads, um, cause I know you like, like you posted your podcast equipment and stuff like that. Is that what yeah. you, when you say running, um, when you, what do you mean by running ads? So you can run ads on Instagram or in boost a post. I I've never done it, but mm-hmm. I like to look at the, you can do that on that platform. If that's something you're interested in, um, with the creator account, but you can look at the analytics where I was on the personal account. You can't. So you can see who, what videos were most popular. 
who's watching them, yeah. how long they're staying on. Yeah, what's a good time to post, uh, what you know, what percentage is men or women, what age range oh, to wow. kind of ge- gear your clients. Yeah. yeah, so it's kind of cool. But yeah. um, I do get asked a lot if I should have, like, the two accounts, personal and business, to keep things separate. Mm-hmm. And I always say, just have one. It's not like you're sharing your deep, dark secrets, right? You need to you show. shouldn't be. Yeah, you shouldn't be. <laughs> but you, a lot of people are just so nervous. They have such a private life. And it's like, well, if you're wanting to attract people to build a relationship with them and that trust, you do have to share, you know, some of the things that you're doing, mm-hmm. not personal things. Um, so I think it's really beneficial to just have that one account. It's interesting you say that because, you know, there's some people obviously with their kids, they might right. be restrictive what they might post but if you're already thinking oh hey i don't want i I don't want certain people to see this right don't post it right because they will see it if they want to see it. yeah i I know some women who they don't post their kids at all and i think that's fine they talk about being a realtor mom but Mm. they don't show their kids and it's like that's fine right it's it's not as big of a deal as people think all right we got one from john too uh in the real estate business uh, you have a lot of partners to work with, mm-hmm. lenders um, and other you yes. know, home inspectors. Yeah, yeah. home inspectors. Uh, how do you choose your partner and uh, what's it like building that relationship with them? Wow, what a great question. <laughs> so uh, I should ask that, John. Yeah. John, want to come on the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was great. I, I guess people that I have chosen are people that I've, I've really gotten to know and built that relationship with and felt like I could trust them. And mm. then ultimately, they, um, you know, I started working with them. I, they provided with such excellent service to myself, but also, most importantly, to the client. Gave right. the client such a great experience. Made you look Hel- good. Held their hand, because it is a lot of uh, first first time home buyers, you mm-hmm. know, at that home inspection, if you're walking through with the buyer, giving them details, following up with them, answering their questions, um, that, that goes a long way, especially if they're like, wow, that home inspector was so great. And so thorough. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, we're going to, we're going to keep working with them. Um, also, you know, I do so many things I'm doing giveaways, I'm doing events and stuff. And if that, uh, partner is willing to collaborate with me is always, uh, really beneficial and it helps build that, that relationship. So right. kind of a combination of all those things. Of the, the key people, because I imagine you have a Rolodex of these people, but there's probably a handful that you work with on right. a regular basis. Were those ones were introduced to you, or did they come to you and say, hey, let's have coffee? Yeah, I think it's, it's a mix. So some of them had been introduced to me, um, or I ended up working with them, let's say, uh, even the buyer chose the lender, for example, mm-hmm. and they really wanted to use that person. And then I ended up working with them that way. Or... Um, you know, yeah, I guess probably being in, introduced to them. Um, I have at times met up with people for coffee mm-hmm. and, you know, I just felt like, wow, we, we really get along great. I think that we could work well together. Let's try it. Let's see. Um, and so, yeah. You made a statement on, um, I think it was the uh, Get Shit Done was the name of the podcast. Oh, GSD yeah, with GSD, Josh Hewa yeah. Smith. Yes. First time home buyer was it was it him or with uh, Jesse Lane? You, you the first pi, first time home buyer seminar because you said a yes. lot of your clients are first time home buyers. Yes, and you guys were like, no one wants to do those. Right. What I I know what my comment would be. I would wonder what was your thought when you said that. With, Not with, to with, downplay first time home buyers. Yeah. But the popularity of going and advertising. Hey, we're having a first time home buyer seminar. Mm-hmm. I've never personally, I've never seen anyone actually have a successful one. A successful one was hopefully, hopefully have more than one couple show up. Right. Yes. Yeah. So I think with that, honestly, the, I, I know there's a lot of lenders listening to my yeah. team. They're watching you here right yeah. now. So when you said that, I'm like, that, and then we were just talking, I want you, you explain as a realtor that having a first time home mm-hmm. buyer, what, what's your feeling about that? Um, well, I haven't, oh, my feeling with the home buyer or the actual first time, seminar? For, f- first time home buyer seminar, yeah. Okay, okay. You're talking about your I've vendor. I've done them a couple times, yeah. yeah. I, I've only done them a, a handful of times, and to me, I felt like they were successful with about between 10 to 15 people. Um, and I, I feel as though it's just such a great way to leverage yourself and showcase that you're an expert and that you can put, you're a host and you can put on this seminar. Mm-hmm. Now, not just, you know, with, 
way to leverage that is to post it all over social media. Do a video about it, promoting it, bring in that lender, promote it with them. Maybe have the lender provide some quick little tips about uh, being a first time home buyer and then hear more at the event. You know, Um, there's ways to make it captivating and enticing for people. And I think it's a great way for you to show up in front of your sphere as as the expert. It takes a little more than just doing a A one-time Facebook page or a flyer. That's not going to get right. You have to... In my experience in getting people to show up, whether right. it's to a training, especially real estate agents, uh, it, it, obviously my goal to show up to a training where I can get in front of them, right. is you got to pound them. Right. I mean, not physically, but <laughs> you got to like constantly, like every other day going, hey, you got to be there, got to yeah. be there, don't miss it. Right. What, one know. thing, yeah, 100%. One thing that I'll mention that I always do, and someone did it to me, and I felt like, oh, that was good, is, um, I, you know, Facebook event. I always say I'm going in order to like show support of them, mm-hmm. but I'm not really going, right? So. So I, I had someone once reach out to me like a week out was like, oh, thank, I'm so excited that you are going to be coming. I can't wait to see you. Right. And it's like, OK, yeah, sure. Yeah. And then she followed up with me the day before and was like, can't wait yeah. to see you tomorrow. You know, a- ask me something about my life, you know. Right. And I was like, wow, she's really expecting me to be there tomorrow. Uh-huh. It kind of entices you to want to show up. Right. So I started doing that with all of my events where like I I people probably see it as like, it's a numbers thing. You're just inviting everybody. Right. So I feel like it's like, I genuinely want these people to show up to the event that I'm inviting. It's not random. And I want to showcase to them that I do that. And and I, I reach out to them a week out and then the day before. I think it makes a difference. Yeah, oh, there's no doubt it makes a difference. I, when I heard you mention that on one of the other shows, I, you know, that uh, you, you took that in because that, it, it, tugged at your heart yeah. a little bit that somebody, yeah. this person really wants to meet me. You know, what is it they want to, yeah. you know, talk to me about or whatever it is that, that, that they may have for you or obviously hoping they're going to get from mm-hmm. you and obviously meet you face to face and create that relationship. So um, what is it about? Two more questions. Oh, yeah, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Two, two more questions. Yes. Two more. <laughs> um, one is by Carrie. She's a new loan officer. She is new to the business, new to being a loan officer, and she wants to know how does she build a relationship with realtors? She, she, she wants to build partnerships that last, and she wants to have um, uh, a professional um, re- repertoire with them, mm-hmm. rapport with them, and she's not sure how to dive in. And yesterday was her first day. Oh, wow, that's <laughs> exciting. You'll meet her in a few minutes. Go ahead. Oh, really? <laughs> And does she work here? Yes. Oh, that's so great. I, I think, um, you know, when someone new reaches out and just asks you like, hey, how can I help you in your business? Mm-hmm. It doesn't even need to be like, you know, with a leads or something, but like, hey, do you need help business planning? Do you need help with a, a future event? Do you need help with that that open house? Like, how can I show up for you? Also, I feel like it's really, it, I always love when people are cheering me on on social media. Like, they're seeing my stuff, they're commenting, they're liking. I To me, I feel like that's them supporting me. Like, I send thank you notes to people because mm-hmm. I'm like, thank you for always, like, showing up because mm-hmm. that is my business. Right. So when people are always, uh, you know, showcasing that, sharing my stuff, liking it, telling people about me, um, even if they don't ever reach out to me for anything it, it means a lot right you, I, I always and i tell new loan officers i'm gonna tell carrie you never know what the next rock uncovers and in our business w- each transaction we get paid pretty well you know when you think about it per transaction now what you do to get that to get that transaction is all you know the things you don't get paid for mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. you are because you you're hopefully going to create and you're going to run upon you turn over that rock and the more people you meet yeah. you never know that that person may tomorrow decide to get out of the mm-hmm. business and go work somewhere else all of a sudden they're going to buy a house so you know what right stevie was so sweet to meet with me and you know mm-hmm. I, I, you know and give you a call you know mm-hmm. what i mean it, you just don't know where that next deal and you only need a handful mm-hmm. a month and make a really mm-hmm. good living in the, in the real estate mm-hmm. industry in, in our in our fields. So, we got one more? Okay, last one from Samantha. Everybody tells me um, that I should become a realtor. A lot of my friends are trying to become a realtor. I'm interested in trying that profession, but I'm not sure if I will be any good at it. What do you think? How, how do I? I think the first term that comes to me is confidence. Yeah. But go ahead. Yeah. I, I think, um, are you willing to m- continuously 
uh, build your database. You need to be willing to be out there and, and meet new people and show up and provide value for them. It's I think it's a misconception what people see on social media. Oh, it looks so fun. The closing, closing here, you know, but it's like, oh, there's just there's just so much more behind it. I think there's a lot of YouTube videos that you can look at for free education from, you know, all these. I mean, I have one and it shows a lot of the behind the scenes and kind of seeing mm-hmm. the tasks that we're really having to do and see if is that something that you really want to do? Are you willing to to give up your weekends to do open houses? Are you willing to give up nights to do those showings for those people? Um, those are a couple of things I'd probably think about. The reward is well, mm-hmm. if you're willing to put it in, like, just like anything else. I mean, you're willing to put in the work. And I, I think what it amazed me, and I was thinking about this morning, when I was listening to um, uh, the one podcast with you is you know, this whole social media thing. You know, you, you kind of came on it when it was, you know, the wave was coming up mm-hmm. and there, I think you mentioned there wasn't a lot like Instagram no courses. Yeah. Well, yeah. There were no <laughs> interest, but now yeah. there is, I mean, and Stevie yeah. has one and there's others out there in the mm-hmm. YouTube world. I mean, if you really want to indulge yourself mm-hmm. into a, a real college education, mm-hmm. dive in there and can quickly, your learning curve real quick, yeah. if you're willing to implement the steps and be patient Yes, because it takes that consistency, but you know, like I think your business, you'd probably say it went and then all of a sudden mm-hmm. it shot up, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it is, the tidal wave came. Yeah, and I, I love YouTube to this day. I probably watch at least a video a day of of other agents and learning from them. It's free education, and it's fabulous. I love it. It could be just one tip that helps you yeah. close the next deal. Yeah. It's, uh, gets that buyer. You say something the right way, gets mm-hmm. that buyer, say, yeah, let's just, let's just make an offer on yeah. this house. I'm not having to travel to get in front of them and meet with them. Like all the, they're giving out this free information online. Ton of mm-hmm. free information. So, all right. So, um, uh, I know we're closing. We have any more questions? Good. Good. Okay. Good. I know we're closing in close to an hour here, so I'm going to kind of wrap things up. Okay. I call it the two minute warning questions because okay. I, I officiate football. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, more important who you know or what you know? Who? 110%. Who you know? I totally agree. Mm-hmm. I totally agree because you can get the YouTube videos. Yeah, 100%. Um, and I think a lot of agents are so nervous that they're not going to know the answer, right? But it's like, it doesn't matter. Just tell them you will get them the answer and you can easily find someone to get you that answer, mm-hmm. right? And and it just goes back to you. And the book goes, well, I, I don't know anyone. Well, get on the phone. Call right. Stevie. Call, right. oh, there many, yes. There's many other great agents that, that are out there and sit down and have coffee mm-hmm. with them. I mean, for $3, you mm-hmm. know, maybe they hopefully they don't, you know, order some foo-foo <laughs> drink uh, that costs $10 at Starbucks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just ha- sit down and have coffee with them. Yep. Uh, you know, meet them somewhere. That's what I, this I business is about. It's all about turning over. Mm-hmm. I call them turning over rocks because people get the, the analogy of, you know, turning over the rock and, you know, you're looking for worms and they're there, right? You know, it, or, you know or you're digging into the thing and hopefully you're going to find that golden nugget. Every relationship is another rock you're unturning mm-hmm. and you don't know what's underneath it. And just keep turning over the rocks. Mm-hmm. You'll find the people that will make you. Mm-hmm. And the more rocks and the faster you turn it over, mm-hmm. leveraging social media helps you mm-hmm. turn more rocks over yeah. faster, right? Um, all right. I know um, you, because I follow you on Facebook <laughs> and have for a while. You uh, you have a gentleman in your life. You guys go out. You guys have been traveling a little bit. Yes. I've seen that. Um, but in town, are you Jaguars, Iceman, or uh, <sighs> Jumbo Shrimp Girl? I love the Jags. Yeah? Yeah. The games are fun. <laughs> so This weekend's game, last weekend's game, uh, yeah. last home game was uh, fun. Not this weekend's game. The weekend we, before's yes. game was very fun. Yeah. Even though it was only 9-6, to six, it was the best 9-6 yeah. to six game. <laughs> I know. I wish I went to that one. <laughs> yeah. What's on your travel bucket list? Um... We want to go to Europe, and I just got a passport. Super. <laughs> <laughs> like, within the last couple of weeks, it just came in. That's great. So now we're, like, ready. Where to, where to go? Have yeah. you guys kind of got a country you want to do? Or you um, he's He's been before, mm-hmm. so there's, like, a couple places he wants to go to. Um, I think Italy is somewhere that he wants to explore as well. So we were also just talking about going to Tulum. In Mexico, you know, so mm-hmm. couple couple different Mexico's places. Over, Mexico's, over, uh, I think, is overdone. I don't well, know. I'm like, I I have to at least go once. Well, that's right. You just got your passport. Yeah, You've so never been out of the country. I've, <laughs> I've never been, so I got to at least experience oh. it one time. It's crazy. You've been on a cruise? Never been on a cruise. 
girl, you live in Florida? Yeah. You well, go. I get very seasick. Oh, okay. So, uh, and even my mom gets really seasick on, on cruises. So I'm like, it's not worth it to me. Yeah. I'm nervous I'll get on well, there. Well, on that plane flight to, to Europe, uh, you may want to take some. Oh, I will. 100%. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, I'll suck it up for that, though. <laughs> um, but the great thing is, if you wanted to go first class, you can. Yeah. And there's drinks are there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, I got to ask a question. Okay. You may or may not want to answer this question. Oh, boy. Okay. So we we're just talking about your current man. I need to, I, I said, who <laughs> like, was, the, who was, because you, I listened to your podcast and you said you just got dumped. You were living on your, yes. I'm like, who was, yes. the, who was the guy that dumped you? Yeah. I bet he's regretting it now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guarantee he is. <laughs> that was such that was a great, great story. And uh, yeah. everyone, Stevie is so approachable. <laughs> Uh, you wouldn't think so by your, you know, your initial thing, because you're like all over, like, oh, God, Stevie's a superstar. But she really is, and her friends have told me uh, she, you're one of the most approachable persons uh -huh. around, and you're so willing to share uh, your your knowledge. You don't see other realtors as competition. So if you want to get mm -hmm. in the real estate industry or you're in and you're you're just kind of at that thing, it's like, I mean, what do I do next? Mm -hmm. and you want some encouragement, some guidance you know, Stevie's there, you yeah. know, tune into her, tune onto your, your <laughs> Facebook page, which will be in the show notes Yeah, uh, there. Sold by Stevie, though, is your tagline. Everywhere. Every, everywhere. Yes. Sold by Stevie uh, is there. Uh, what is the best way if someone wanted to reach out to you and have a cup of coffee with you? Um, Probably email Stevie at StevieHan.com, but Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. Uh, Facebook Messenger, I know works. I finally did get it to respond. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I'm hoping once I hire someone new that I'll be able to be out more and meet with more people and stuff right. like that. It'll give me a little bit more freedom. Yeah. I, 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 you're the sky's the limit for you. It's just gonna be so exciting. Thanks. And your, your videos, I it really is. It's a pleasure to meet you today. Yes, great. Finally, to you. get you see I know. face to face, uh, rather than just all your 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 great videos. So, <sighs> folks, reach out to Stevie. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome.